Monday morning, yes. So today is uh, Basuro, Basuro, rubbish. So just walked down, dropped it off. You can get the guides, well, guy walks around the subdivision, and uh, today it's about Belisario Heights. Life Log 2. So you can get the guy to pick your rubber sharp, 30 pesos. Uh, but you've got to catch him in the morning because he walks around at around half past five, half past six, going basuru, basuru. But uh, it's looking nice. Today. Lovely day again, isn't it? That's beautiful. Yesterday on Sunday, I had something to eat, catch up, get back to that relationship. Yeah. Uh, when you spend time away from your Filipina, uh, it's uh, it's all it's very good when you're online and you're talking, you're skyping every day. But it's not that same when you're living together. Do you know what I mean? When you're waking up together and where you're sharing the apartment, and you're sharing each other's lives. So we're getting back into that. Uh, all good. Uh, really, really happy. Uh, great to be back. Um, it's taken me about a week to get over jet lag and uh, yeah, um, I didn't realise when you got when you do run and do these uh, these long trips they do take it out of you uh, they do take it out of you and uh, so got over that I'm feeling better now I'm not uh, so weak and drained, uh, even with all the vitamins and all the other gobbledygook stuff that uh, I'm going to take here. So I'm just having a walk around the subdivision today. As I said, Monday. Um, I've been out a couple of times and uh, I need to get the bike serviced so that I can actually go and ride. Uh, it's been three months, it's had nothing done to it. So today I'm going to have a look at that, see what, uh, what surprises I have in store. Uh, dogs in the background. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> yappy, yappy, yappy. So, uh, Annie's cooking some pork chops at the moment. Uh, it's about half past nine, quarter past nine. <clears throat> she was studying last night to around four o'clock. She's got school today at two, so I need to keep my gob shut and keep it quiet. So, I live down that way. So, we're actually going to go this way. Gold factory down here, which is where the fruit fruit people are. This guy was building a house on the left hand side here when I left about three months ago, and uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, what do you think? A little bit of a monster. Let's see here. I've done a lot in three months. Certainly. So that's going to be about 60 million pound house, 60 million peso house. Okay. Oh, he did buy the lot, so they had this lot here, which he's done nothing with it. I think that's going to be park here. But nice colour scheme. Uh, a bit big for me, taking up all the lot. They tend to do that here in the Philippines. They put a wall around your, your, your land so people don't wander through it. They've got a tendency. Oh, look at that beautiful bougainvillea. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, yeah. Stunning, isn't it? What a beautiful flower. So, yeah, they tend to build their walls all the, around, all the way around the edge of the, per the perimeter of their property. And some places will build the house, like that one, right up to the edge. And your parking's underneath. So there's a white bulldog video there. Oh, beautiful, that smell. That's beautiful aroma. So uh, okay, yeah. What am I doing today? Oh right, okay. I watched a vlog last night about explaining what you need when you get into the Philippines. Well, as I've just come into the Philippines, um, I'll explain. Back in. Uh, June and July I was being told I need a yellow pass and I need a vaccine and I need my uh, my 
vaccination card. And then away uh, they turned around and said you need to do this one health pass fill it out online um, which is what I did um, and then they turn around and come back to me to and say it's been superseded by a thing called an e-pass so I went online about 20 days before um, I came back in October checked it out uh, made sure I knew what I was doing and then a week before I came went back to the Philippines, I filled out the e-pass, goes through all the stuff, it wants your flight details, passport number, where you've got your vaccinations, and it wants you to fill out the vaccinations. It's got uh, two vaccinations plus your boosters, it asks for that. And then it sends it away, and then they send you back an e-pass which you get on your phone. Now to Gatwick to check in. Gatwick Airport, really simple, showed them a ticket, showed them a new passport and the reason I went on to my paperwork, because I had a new passport, I needed to put a new passport number in to my documentation online for the Philippines because I went out on one passport number and I was coming in on another passport number so it wouldn't pick me up. So made those changes, went to Gatwick, checked in, um, showed my passport, showed my ticket, and they asked me for my e-pass. So I showed the e-pass, um, but the scanner wasn't working and they couldn't pick the scanner up. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. And uh, so they just took down the number. PH, whatever it was, and six or seven digits. That was cool, got on a plane, flew into Dubai. No checks in Dubai at all because I was on transit. They move you out of one area into another area and you sit in that transit lounge. You can get out of the airport if you want to, but you need to go online and book an exit and then an exit and entry visa and they'll hold your luggage while you go and look at Dava uh, you go and look at Dubai, which I think is pretty cool, but I didn't do that. Um, then when I entered Dava, I entered the Philippines, at Manila, when we come off the plane, uh, it took extra long to get off the plane, like 35 minutes longer, because what they turned around and did was they were checking people with a doctor coming off the flight from Dubai with the OFWs, and there was about 15 or 20 of the OFWs didn't have e-pass or OHP. So they were put to one side and you showed this doctor your uh, your one health part, your one health pass or your e-pass and then they sent you off to collect your baggage down towards immigration. <coughs> On the way to immigration, you went through another booth that checked your e-pass. Again, my e-pass didn't pick up with the QR code. So you got this little red scanner. So they wrote the number down and then they turn around and tell you to go through. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated because they're asking that you just turn up with your ticket you, or you just enter with your ticket and your passport. No, you don't. Yeah? these videos are all missing this out that you have to fill out there's a little brown and white piece of paper that you need to put your destination your full name your passport number and how long you're going to stay in the philippines for 
well I'm on a Visa SRRV doesn't matter I still have to fill this form out and everybody else has to fill this form out it's an entry slip you then go up to the to, up to the, the lady and the lady then turns around or the immigration officer then turns around and checks your passport checks your uh, super paper and waves you through there is no check to show Vaxer even though I got it no check no check because you've already done it at this uh, e-pass cubicle which is about <coughs> 50 meters before immigration and you all have to queue so I'm standing here if I'm in the queue over there it's uh, passports foreign nationals OFWs and senior citizens they're the two lines now everybody is queuing down the passport now I can go to the OFW uh, to the uh, senior citizens but they didn't turn around and do that they, this guy turned around and said I needed a queue here queued there then I needed to go back get another one of these pieces of paper because they wouldn't let me in fill it out give it to the lady and all it is is processing that you are coming to the Philippines now I will now go with my new passport down to the PR a office and then get them to move my visa stamp from my old passport into my new passport but uh, <coughs> I found it a little bit confusing but why is there a doctor standing at the Emirates flight pulling over travellers that don't have e-pass how, how do they get on the plane without an e-pass in Dubai but the rules have all changed you still need the e-pass you still need the vaccine you still need this little brown piece of paper and you still need a queue to get in on customs